Hi there. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right in, my friend. I wish you could come in and just sit down with us and, you know, have a good hot cup of tea and just have a great time together. I guess that'll be one of the charms of heaven, you know, when we're not going to be rushed ever and we can just have this wonderful time of conversation and talk about what the Lord has done and all that's going to be great. I have a return guest today. His name is Bobby Petroselli, and I think he's Italian. I think maybe uh, some of the things he's been saying. And he's been on before, but it's been a couple of years, and I'm glad to have him back because I believe there's nothing in the world like a good motivational speaker, and I, I mean that. You know, so many times I tell you one paragraph in a book, one visit to a therapist, maybe one sentence in a sermon, and a good motivational speaker can change your life be open to it that's what bobby has done for many years in our school system where it is so needed and if you haven't heard him before you're going to see he can grab your attention just like that and get truth across in a, just in a small amount of time and change these lives you're going to be inspired and we're going to be talking about his book you matter it doesn't and some of the things little um kind of games he plays with the kids like having them close their eyes and raise their hand for something uh, it's so revealing I'm anxious for you to meet him and I'm going to join Stephanie we're going to make sausage stuffed zucchini boats and these are so wonderful wonderful main entree just throw a salad at it and maybe a hard roll you got it and we'll show you how to make those uh, before I join her, though, we've been out of these. We got some more. The Too Blessed to Be Stressed Cookbook. The wonderful thing about this, and the author, Deborah Cody, has been on with me several times. Prep time for each recipe is 20 minutes or less. And we've done some of these, and the ones we've done are very tasty, very, very tasty. So it's available again for your gift of at least $20 to the program, and we will get it right out to you. I think you will love it. And I'm over here with Stephanie now. You got the sausage going. Yes. So we took two uh, sweet Italian sausage links. We took the casing off mm -hmm. and broke it up, and that's what's sauteing mm -hmm. in here. I'm putting Arthlean Rippy to work today. Yes. You're going to spray the pan. You're going to put in a cup and a quarter of marinara sauce, mm -hmm. and then you're going to scrape out my last little zucchini mm -hmm. boat. Yep. Okay? That's so I have the sausage already cooked in here, so I'm going to put in some onions. About a half of a chopped onion. You know, Wanda told me she fixed this for her boys when and they were still salt. home. Oh, yeah. This is delicious. It calls for pasta, you know, make it over pasta or something. Uh -huh. But if you're trying to eat low carb, yeah, I, you could just eat the yeah. zucchini boats. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, here's the... Oh, hey. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oopsie. This is the inside of the zucchini. What we scraped out, I'm just going to chop it up real quick. This is probably the way you can get kids to eat zucchini and they don't know it. Yeah, so good. These are going to be delicious. It smells so good in here. Mm -hmm. And the sausage adds a nice little zing to it. Yes. But you could so, do chicken. You could do, you know, uh, mm -hmm. other meats. Mm -hmm. But the sausage just adds a little kick. Yes, and when this is all put together, oh, it's going to be good. So now, good. Um, do... Do you put the pasta in? No. You don't? Okay. Mm -mm. No. Nope. You add it after. Yep. So it's already cooked. Yep. So let me put my zucchini in here, and I'm just going to saute this up a little From bit. From some of the things he was saying, we ought to have Bobby Petroselli come in here and make us some well, pasta sauce. Well, I said that until. Until what? So this is what he said, okay? I said, come and make sauce, and we'll talk like this. He said, well, you know why Italians talk like this? And I said, why? He said, because we spit when we talk, and we're trying to catch the spit. I said, oh. I'm not making sauce with you. <laughs> yeah, this is a really small area here. <laughs> we'll have a shield, like one of those salad bar shields. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's the truth. When we, we were kind of newlyweds and all, our first little pastorate, we, we were associates, and... You would go to the homes of these Italians. They had pots this big. Oh, they know how to spaghetti eat. Spaghetti sauce. They know how to eat. And they eat. put a big bib on you. Mm -hmm. And then you sit down, and I'd eat a bowl of pasta about that big, and I thought we were through. <laughs> but I was pregnant, so. Oh, I, so. I, I, but then they brought what? Okay, that was the Then they brought appetizer. the turkey. Yes. 
and the dressing, everything goes with it, and they capped it off with lemon pie. Woo. And I remember when I was eating the second slice of lemon pie, my <laughs> husband went, I know her not. Too so. funny. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to put those in the in there okay. for me in the pan. You're going to take the zucchinis and put mm -hmm. them in there. Thank you. So this just sautés down a little bit. The zucchini can get it has a lot of water in it, so if it gets too uh, wet in here, you can take some of the... You get some of the liquid off? Liquid out, yeah. Okay. This is so... Uh, this looks so good. I can't and wait And I to keep taste thinking it. you're going to trick your kids into eating zucchini. Yeah, because they're both. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who thought of that. Shall um, I try to get one more in? Yes, please. Okay. Yep. Mm. Squish them up tight. There you go. So we fill the boats up with the, with the mixture. We put um, cheese over the top, and then we bake it for about 30 minutes covered with aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. And then do you want to show how beautiful? Oh, yes. Be careful. It might be hot. Yes. It is gorgeous. Look at that. And you can go with the <sighs> pasta or not. Uh, or not, yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks so, so good. I'm going to try to get it over without it. You got it? I can help if you need me to. There you go. Mm. Oh, my. Mm. So good. Yeah, I have a feeling the um, sausage gives it the... Yeah, and I was worried about, like, because it was only a little bit of sauce on the bottom of the plate, and I was like, mm -hmm. well, what is that going to do? But that really... Oh, that's really hot. It is very hot, yes. If I burn my mouth, I can't talk. Here, I'll do it. You do it. Okay. You taste it. Because if me. I burn my mouth, I just have to go back to work. So yeah. it's okay. Let me not have any cheese coming down my. Mm. And let me tell you something about this girl. If it's that not good, you'll sauce, know it. I don't know what marinara sauce you got, but that, it was Is a it? jar, and now it's very good. Well, it was the cheapest on the shelf. I know that. I'm ready to go <laughs> digging through the garbage can. <laughs> Okay, uh, we call them um, zucchini, sausage, sausage stuffed, stuffed zucchini boats, mm -hmm. and the recipe is absolutely free. Mm -hmm. uh, that information. Yes, the recipe. Up we screen. don't send you the food. <laughs> We've had some phone calls about people saying, "So you'll make the food and you'll send it to us?" <laughs> no. Yeah, she will. I will. Uh, I time. wish we could. That would be amazing. But we'll send you the recipe. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, this whole thing is a whole lot easier. Yeah, than, than you might think. So, yeah, so easy. Uh, several choices uh, in order to get your recipe. They're coming up. You make your choice. And after that, you're going to meet Bobby Petroselli. He's Italian. Shock. <laughs> if you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, welcome back to Homekeepers. Bobby Petroselli. I'm honored to be back here. You guys are, as we say in Italian, alla familia. You're our family, my family. I love all of you. Could an Italian speak with no hands? Uh, for me, it'd be tough. Yeah. You know, it'd be real tough. I think it's required. Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> um, it's been a while. Give us your, pro your story and how you ended up with a ministry called 10 Seconds. Well, long story short, you know, yeah. going back over 30 years, yes. I tragically lost my wife. Yes. While asleep in bed, truck dri a drunk driver crashed his truck through my house, killed my wife, changed my life forever. As I say to my audiences, my life was not changed in one day. It was changed in one moment. Mm -hmm. Well, the students at the school that I was at, Arthleen, responded so wonderfully and rescued me. So they showed me still how much I mattered, that this didn't have to you define me. You were working me. in a school. I was a teacher and a coach at the time. Mm -hmm. So before I ever started speaking, for literally almost 11 years, I was a teacher, coach, and guidance counselor. And then literally 26 years ago, I stepped out and started speaking full time because of what I went through. And I really saw the hurt and the pain and the brokenness in people. Mm 
and realized... And kids. And kids. And I realized the man who drove drunk through my house, I throw this out to my audience, how many of you believe drinking and driving killed my wife? Every hand goes up. I go, I disagree with you. I go, remember before a person drives drunk, they got to be drunk in the first place. Why is he drunk? And here's what I came to the understanding. He was drunk because somewhere in his life, his heart was broken. It told him he didn't matter. And literally, mm -hmm. that's why the word says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Mm -hmm. He was anesthetizing the pain yeah. to anesthetize and drown out the pain of his brokenness. And alcohol abuse became his choice. Yes. And how intense has that become the last 30 years? We've got kids that are shooting other kids, and we've got an unbelievable, heartbreaking percentage of fatherless children. And the uh, Bible says, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. We've got an angry, wrathful generation because the father's not there. Well, you know, when I speak and I'm done with the program, I get mobbed by kids afterwards. Literally, I get mm -hmm. such an influx. And you know the number one thing they say to me? Number one phrase, I thought it was my fault that, and, then they, and I'm going to tell you what the number one that is, until today. You made it so clear that when somebody else did wrong to me or broke my heart, it had nothing to do with who I am uh -huh. and nothing to do with me. It was their hurt and pain that was perpetrated upon me. But here's the number one thing I get. I thought it was my fault that... I don't know who my father is. My parents got divorced. My parents split up. My dad bailed on my family. I don't even know who my mom is. Why was I given up for adoption? Was I not good enough? And it comes down to the family issue as number one. Then they go down the list of bullying. They go down the list of um, being rejected, not having friends. They go down the list of being verbally, physically, sexually abused. But number one is family issues and how much that has affected them and that has chased them down. That's why even in my book, I try to explain to people is everybody has an it that tries to define them, that chases after us. I tell people our brokenness and our dysfunction chases after us to define us. Here's a simple analogy I want to show you, our thing. See this bag? Mm -hmm. This bag represents our hurt, our pain, and our brokenness. The phone, I have a smartphone. I don't know why. I'm not very smart <laughs> in using it, but the smartphone represents us. So watch this. If I pull the cell phone in the bag, is it still a cell phone when it's in the bag? Of course. of course, but here's the kicker. Is it being used for the purpose that it was manufactured and created for? No. no. Well, that's what I say to my audiences. Every one of you in here, when you are surrounded and dictated by your hurt, pain, and brokenness, you are not living the life that God put you on this earth to live. So my goal today is to do everything in my power to help pull you out of that bag, bag to be who you good. were created to be. That, that is really good. Um, Obviously, God gifted you with motivational speaking, and I, I know a few things that are so important and so life-changing as a good motivational speaker. Now, I was watching some of your things online, and we're going to get his um, website up, and also they can get the book through absolutely. the website, through, through Amazon, the website. Anybody, Absolutely, um, absolutely. And I would say youth pastors get this book, okay? Uh, you Matter. It doesn't. And um, so the you did a little experiment, right? You had this audience in a public school. Thank God you're in public schools. And you asked the kids, close your eyes. And when I ask you a question, if it's the way you're thinking, you raise your hand. And so um, you had them concentrate on either past, present, or future. And you said 60% of them raised their hand that, about the past. And, and here's one of that's the phrases. That's very it, it, it is. And here's one of the simple things I throw out to them. Don't let the pain of the past or then the fear of the future. Here's why we fear the future. Because of what we've experienced the in the past and the pain that's never been addressed. And then the fear of the future to stop you mm -hmm. from being present in the present. This is all we have is this present moment. Embrace this moment. Embrace what you were able to do today. But here's the problem. It's like so many of us in life end up driving a car, spending all our time looking in the rearview mirror because right. we're looking at what happened to us. And the simple reality is, even when I'm speaking in churches in the faith-based groups, I'll ask them all the time, Arthur, and I'll say, you tell me you preach the gospel. What's the gospel? All I ever get is Jesus died for my sins. 
wait a minute, yes, but that's not the whole gospel. He also came to heal my broken heart. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees and Sadducees, it's the sick that need a physician. It's God understands why somebody does what they do. It's not like, well, you know what? I'm the God and the creator of the universe. I have no idea why you're sinning why you and going down did. that path. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of course you do. That's why he bled internally. Mm -hmm. That's why every aspect of how Christ bled on the cross, what he did was cover every area of our life from our brokenness, our sound mind, our physical healing, and our sin. Everything was covered by the blood he shed. It's deeper than we have really looked at it. And you have an interesting picture of Jesus. I think, I think we have it. Um, uh, we're going to bring it up and look very closely to what it says on the arms. And you created this, right? Absolutely. And it, it says you matter. Because here's what I tell people with John. Beautiful. It's on the screen right now. Awesome. I tell people with John 316. I said, let me give you a little paraphrase of John 316, and I'll pick on you for a moment, Arthur. Okay. You mattered so much to God. You were of such great value to God that just like you and I would never spend money knowingly on something that we do not believe has that value. Well, God knew how incredible and valuable you were. But the only way to reconnect, reestablish you to him is through the death of his son. Because here's what I tell people. If we were not of great value, then in all honesty, the death of Jesus Christ and the crucifixion is the biggest joke and mockery in history. Why is God going to give up his son to die for a piece of junk? Yeah. No, we're of such great value to him. We matter so much to him. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want everybody to know. Or as we say in Brooklyn, not only you matter, we say use matter. You, we oh, want that's, <laughs> that's more intense, there right? There you go. Use, how do you spell use? Y-O-U-Z. Oh. <laughs> and matter is M-A-T-T-A or M-A-T-T-A-H. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you speak what, almost a couple hundred times a year? I speak somewhere in the, about 150 times, okay. give or take, and 85% um, are educational Okay, groups. that's why I was going to ask you. Uh, and most of that's public schools. Public schools, most of it. Of course, I do some faith-based schools and right. Christian schools and even Jewish faith schools, but most of the 85% are public schools, so when you're colleges, in public and universities. Schools, how close can you get to saying, you need God? I, I do it in a very non-threatening way. I'll, when I talk about how did I get through my tragedy, I said, I'll use these phrases. Listen, I'm in a public school, so I respect the rights of what I can or can't do. Sure. But for me personally, without my very strong personal faith, I couldn't be here today. And then I'll also get into how to have faith and belief in myself. But I talk about that in such a way that I'm not doing anything to infringe upon anybody else's system or belief systems. Uh, what, give me some of the feedback from some of the students. Um, you probably ought to carry a notebook around and write some of them down. I get so many emails, um, texts sometimes, Facebook messages, and I'm humble. I'm in tears. I literally am in tears when I read them. I get kids that will come up to me and say, I've been going to counseling for five years. I got more out of your one-hour program than I've gotten in five years because you surprised. really helped me understand more than ever the depth of where this hurt came from mm -hmm. and how it's been chasing after me and how I see myself through that. You know, even the other day, I, I won't complain. I'm grateful for every opportunity. I was just in Hawaii last week speaking. And well, I that must have been rough. It was suffering for Jesus. Yes, sir. <laughs> I spoke to four schools, and I also did two educational groups with 800 teachers, coaches, administrators from the big awesome. island of Hawaii. Wonderful. Well, I did four schools, and I threw out to the audience, and they all re returned their response to what I say to them. I said, do you know what your biggest fear is? And I couldn't believe it. They knew and they understood they would say, my biggest fear is my fear of being rejected, not being loved, not being accepted, not feeling I measure up, I'm good enough, I fit in. And that's what, and then they'll come back to me and say, but today you helped me really gather that, wait a minute, because this happened in my life, it's not who I am, it's what happened to me, but it's not who I am. And that to me becomes the biggest thing that people need to grasp. That must be such a revelation to a young person. Just life-changing. Now, also, we were talking about a situation that really 
the ramifications of it. It needs, it needs to just be multiplied. And I think some of our young people are pretty good with this. But you told me the story about a young man. Uh, was he in kind of an all African American school? And he was he was eating lunch and and just all by himself. And he just needed to know that that he's loved. And I would share those stories when I speak in the assembly. I said, you know what? I said, life doesn't happen one day at a time. It happens one moment. I said, you know, you could take one moment and sit next to somebody, invite them to yeah. be with you, love on them, just show them. One of the things I send my audiences out with, I said, put on the You Matter garment. Take one. I said, could you imagine if every person in this room took one moment a day to make a difference in the life of another person? I got to tell you this. I didn't tell you this earlier. Before I left this morning to come over, I all of a sudden am reading a post on social media. And in Santa Fe, where I had worked when I went through the tragedy, and I had been back five times because of the school shooting that had happened there, but one young boy literally started to post these things about how tough life has been. And, he, and, and I'll be honest with you, Arthleen, he's starting to sound like he's being suicidal. And I reached out to him because it just stood out to me. Yeah. And he literally came back and I could see the tears in the words he said. He said, you have no idea. He goes, so many times I want to feel that I'm loved and valued and you took the time mm -hmm. to tell me how much I mattered and that my life is so yeah. worth it. I scream out to the church in a positive way before we go after anything else. There's a reason why the word heart is used 836 times in the Bible. There's a reason why, watch this, the largest piece of armor we as Christians wear is the breastplate of righteousness. You know why? Because righteous and sinful living come from the heart. If my heart is not right, I'm going sin to live sinfully. There's a reason why he says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Mm -hmm. Crucify the flesh daily. What did Jesus do? In the cross, on the cross, he healed my broken heart. You know what my simple prayer is every night for me, Arthleen? I said, Father, every day I give you my heart. Mm -hmm. I pray that you baptize it in your blood one more yes. time because your, your blood came to heal that brokenness. Yeah. And anything that I have sinned and done wrong and I need a renewed mind and a healed body, may your blood just bathe it, heal it, and deliver it. Yes, and if you just join me, I'm talking to Bobby Petroselli, and thank God he is in our schools talking to our young people, and he knows exactly how to talk to them. I think you could tell that. I want to talk to you again about his book. You can get it through the website. You can get it at Amazon.com. You matter. It doesn't. Uh, if there's anybody out there who teaches young people in Sunday school or any kind of a situation like that or... Uh, youth pastors, uh, you really ought to have this because he kind of has that pulse, that heartbeat of the young people today. And sometimes, Bobby, when I think about it, and I've been in the ministry all my life, it's so enormous. There are so many contributing factors to our young people. They haven't had time to make any really conscious decisions and uh, we're getting ready to address, and we've done it before, but I've got a, a very great expert coming on uh, very soon about human trafficking. And, and this, this nation, born kind of in the fires of revival, our Constitution reeks with God and his will and his plan, and yet we are the biggest proponents of human trafficking in the world, this United States of America. It makes me want to throw up. Well, you know what? When, when I go into schools in other areas, for 11 years I've been part of James Robinson's ministry, Life Outreach, rescuing kids sold mm -hmm. in human trafficking. And here's something I share with people even on that. Those kids are so broken. You think I'm going to go up to them and talk about their sin and their behavior before I go after their heart condition? No. But here's the reality. God showed me that people desperately want to be loved in life. And I always come back to this. When parents have sold their kids or given up their kids or allowed their kids to stay there, it comes down to one thing which is really sad. It comes down to the fear of a money issue, that they're willing to do something so horrific because the pressure and the fear and the anxiety of having money, I'm going to give up my kid in this way or allow my kid to do that just for money, it shows once again how broken our society is starting from the top to bottom, bottom to top, side to side, front to back. And Jesus is the only one who can heal that brokenness. Now tell me this, can we have kids that are kind of being trafficked? They're sitting next to us in church. You're talking to them in the schools. Uh, they haven't all been kidnapped 
No, that's what I'm saying. And But what happens is they've been pushed in it by their families. There's even been some kids that the guilt trip that parents, trust me, I've talked with them, the guilt trip their parents have put on them because they're hurting so bad financially that the kids have gone out and done it because they want to help their family. Once again, it's that whole demeanor and mindset. I thought it was my fault. Well, I wanted to help my family, so I was willing to follow, excuse the expression, the stupidity of what they were doing to me because we needed to provide funds for the family. Yeah, but there's some also perhaps being trafficked that the parents don't even know. No, absolutely. You have a, you know, it, you have a little of everything. It's it got is. so many... There's so many components. demeanors and Some facets of it. Some are kidnapped. Absolutely. You have a combination of all of it. And to me, it used to be more the kidnapped or taken and that type of thing, but you have more and more of these other aspects that have opened up. And here's the kicker. Because of social media, uh -huh. there's so many great things about social media, but also, you know, I, I use this analogy in schools with bullying. When I had a problem with a kid growing up, it wasn't dealt with because I had the rotary dial phone. I couldn't use that phone. Mm -hmm. I dealt with it the next day. Today, and I talk about this in my assemblies, kids have an issue. Less than two minutes later, it's all over social media, and all of a sudden, who's throwing you under the bus? Who can't stand you? And kids even say to me in assemblies, it's uh, social media bullying. And they take that Cyber to bullying. Yeah. They take it to heart because they're so bombarded with it at such a quick moment and also an eight or nine year old boy can watch porn on that thing absolutely like that God there's such us. an accessibility to everything and here's the simplicity of it everything great that god created the imposter yes the loser satan camouflages it in a different ways exactly and counterfeits it mm -hmm. i always say this you never find a thief going where there's no value. Yeah. You don't see a thief holding up a homeless man at gunpoint, and I don't mean that disrespectful. Right. The homeless man may not have anything of material value. The thief wants to go where there's material value. Yeah. Satan's no different. If I can go after the young. this, that's right, the young ones, then we can right. stop them from being who God's put them on the earth to be and put them in that bag. Oh, it spins. So good to have you on. We're almost on out it. of time, can you imagine? No, not with us. It's been about two <laughs> years. Uh, but Aren't you glad he's out there? Uh, this gift isn't passed around to a whole lot of people. It's a very specialized gift, and I think it is a gift to the youth of the nation. So I hope you got the website. I hope you put him on your prayer list uh, because he's in the trenches with Satan. Satan's going to pay the highest prices for those young people because they're the most value to him. So um, now you know. I want you to pray for them, and I certainly want you to join us next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.